When you use cows, you can decide to use them in one of two ways. You can use them as device cows, in which case a printer would count, or you can use them as user cows, in which case the user would be. So if I have, um, the best example I give for these would be if I had two organizations and organization number one, I have five people and those five people all have laptops, they have desktops, and they all have smartphones that get their email from the exchange server. So every per those five people have, five, have three devices each. That's 15 devices that are touching the server. So I would need 15 cals for that if I went by device. If I go by user, I need five because it's the user that's connecting. How they're connecting with it, we don't care, okay? Similarly, I have a telemarketing company and I'm loved by everybody. <laughs> but I do three shifts of operations because we enjoy calling people at three o'clock in the morning. So I have um, five workstations, but I have three shifts. So I have the people that work, you know, nine to five and then five to three and then whatever. So I have three people using one machine. In that case, I'd rather go five devices because then I'm not paying for 15 users. When you set up your network, you specify whether you want to go device-based or user-based cows. Usually, user-based makes more sense. Okay, usually. And when you get into licensing, the first question that you need to ask yourself and your trusted business advisor, how current do I want to be? That's really at the core. When you start talking about what the cost is going to be for upgrading or for software assurance or for whatever, if the answer is, you know, if I'm you know, XP was good enough for me for seven years, so I see no reason why I'm going to upgrade from seven. Well, then paying an additional premium so that you can have all of the upgrades may not make as much sense. Whereas if you're also sitting there going, you know, we are in such a mess because all this crap is old, pardon my French, and we got this way because we never wanted to spend the additional funds to buy new, buy new, buy new, then a license agreement actually will be less expensive than just buying a new copy of everything every time the new version comes out. So it really depends on your approach to keeping up to date. If this was a Microsoft presentation, there'd be no question. You should keep up to date with everything the day they come out with something, you should upgrade it, all that kind of fun stuff. If you're sitting here strictly looking at it from a cash flow standpoint, you should run things into the ground. You should absolutely not upgrade until you have to because all you're doing is feeding the cash cow over in, over in Redmond. The truth is really dependent upon your organization. I will say this, we have seen a lot of companies that are in a mess right now from an infrastructure standpoint because they did nothing and they did nothing for several years. You know, we're, we're in the process of migrating one organization, relatively small, about 45 workstations, two or three servers. And every, every time we peel something up, every machine's configured differently. Everybody's set differently because they had different settings in mind when they did it. There's no rhyme or reason. And it's all relatively ancient. So they're gonna pay a much higher premium right now because they've done nothing and now they have to almost start over anew. So this is a, a slide I stole uh, from a presentation in Germany, strangely enough. And really, you don't need to know all, all what's going on here, but there's three layers of, of options here for a small organization. There's first of all a specialty server. Specialty server meaning it does very little but hopefully it does it very well. So that would be your Windows Home server, as I talked about earlier. Or it would be, I'm just buying like a NAS thing. 
You know, something that can have multiple, uh, you, you know, people can, can just use it to store devices up on the network. So it's a, it's a network-based storage device, but really not doing much else beyond that. So, okay, so I've got no real, I can't run applications on it. Um, I can't do anything along those lines. And Microsoft Windows Home Server, also known as Veil. Oh, by the way, that, that home server is limited to 10 users. So, so we could do that. And the SBS Essentials, which was codenamed Breckenridge, that can do it, although it's a little on the high end, relatively speaking. So we've got those two, as well as just, I've got this device. So we've got one client, or not necessarily a client here, we just started talking to them about a week or so ago. Uh, they've got their network set up, and they've got a network storage device. And everybody goes to that to store and retrieve data. There's no centralized control, there's no centralized administration, there's no centralized management, there's no centralized monitoring. So anytime they make any changes to anything from a security standpoint, configuration, they gotta run around and make all the changes to everybody's desktop. Now there's only about eight or nine desktops in that organization, so it's not necessarily the end of the world, but on this scale. These guys, a solution server, it's optimized. It's made for that niche, that smaller organization. So now we've got either the essentials, the Aurora level, which is a little bit higher, and you've got standard. The Aurora, the essentials, is really a combination of on-premise and the cloud. So we're going to do things like Outlook. We're going to do things like email. We're going to do those through a hosted cloud-based solution. Because those are still critical. Those aren't going anywhere. But in addition to that, we're going to use the line of business applications, we're going to have centralized storage, we're going to have centralized backups, we're going to have all that sort of stuff, so we can do that through the Small Business Server Essentials product. Okay? Don't have to buy CALS, don't have to worry about that. Or if I want to, it's a little bit larger than that, then I can go with the Small Business Server Standard. It's a little bit larger than that, I can do the premium add-on. Okay? And with Small Business Server, you can add additional servers if you want to. You're not limited to this one or two server. You're limited by the number of users. Or traditional. I got a server. Now, the good news is I can do anything. I can do any server configuration I want to because we're not limited here. And we can put as many users as we want and all that fun stuff. However, the hand-holding and the IT level increases over here. Okay? Any questions on this? When we look at comparison, so we can do, yeah, I'm just trying to look for any critical stuff here. So we've got health monitoring. We can monitor the health of the workstations that are on the network. We've got domains. We've got remote web access to server and PC backups. We don't have the PC backup included with Windows uh, SBS standard, by the way. OK, because now to handle up to 75 computers and do backups, no, that's not going to go well. Now, there's all sorts of third-party alternatives you can use. but. And what can I do with domains? So essentially, we can still create and use a domain with the SBS Essentials. And a domain is a centralized method of controlling all of the authentication and authorization for the network. So to summarize, the appliance-based low cost of entry. Okay, I don't want to say it's a fire and forget, but it's close to that. It's a pre-installed environment, so we buy the hardware, it comes installed with it. Near zero administration, low customization, no line of business support, low cloud integration, zero IT skills required. Now, I'm going to say to a certain degree, some of this is sales stuff from Microsoft. The truth is, there really shouldn't be a lot of IT skills required, unless something happens, okay? Low cloud integration, 
Now you get into the definition of what's integration. Okay. No line of business support. If you start talking on the home server side, nope, not really. Once you start getting into the SBS essentials, well, actually, no, there is integration. So, and then you get into the whole, well, what's, what's line of business integration anyway? That opens up a whole different can of worms. What I would say on this is that if you have explicit goals as to what this server should be running, get a solid answer from somebody. I would suggest us, but we lie a lot, so. Um, because you could be in a, you know, where you're trying to do a client server type of application, which requires, and yeah, it looks like it'll be okay, but it requires a, a full database implement, and, and you know, SBS Essentials isn't necessarily gonna do that one. Whereas, we're gonna install the application on the desktops, and really the server's just gonna be used for storage, so we can retrieve the data and then update the data, in which case it'll be fine. There's all sorts of points between those. The solution-based, this is where the sweet spot is for most of the, the small businesses in the world, okay? And I would say really even between these two guys. Because for the most part, your true business operation, that which you do to gain revenue, probably isn't that much different than the other guy. Isn't that much different than the other guy. Isn't that much different than the other guy. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, similar. It may be the way we've done things for the past five years because it was set up this way. That could be different. But this gives you a good, op a good opportunity to kind of consolidate and figure out, is this the best way to go? And then your traditional. The traditional is not going to be quite as out of the box for you. Well, that's okay because our solution's a little more, a little more complicated. Okay. More of the stuff that you can do. Everybody has fax server. Everybody has file services. Okay. Or this. What did they take out in SBS 2011? Integration with Office Live. Office Live was kind of their early version of BPOS, but it really wasn't an exchange environment. It's kind of, it's still sort of there. It was a free service for the most part. Um, forefront security for exchange and Live One Care for server. Essentially, your spam and virus protection, uh, those are no longer there. And then uh, a, a desktop link gadget for Vista. We're all going to miss that. You know. Um, well, yeah, and, or, or if you also miss Clippy from Office. I, I do. How long has this been out? Okay, good question. How long has this been out? The Small Business Server 2011 standard and uh, premium add-on have been out for a couple months, a few months. The Essentials is going to be released within the next two months. So the Essentials is not out yet. 